My name is Zach Tevall. I'm a BCBA and a behavior consultant from Bretton Associates. Today I want to briefly talk to you about some practical and easy to implement self-management tactics. So when self-management tactics are used effectively, they have been shown to assist people with living more effective and efficient daily lives, assist people with breaking bad habits and acquiring good ones. They've also been shown to help people accomplish difficult tasks and achieve personal lifestyle goals. So what is self-management? Defined by Cooper, Heron, and Heward 2007, self-management tactics are the personal application of behavior change tactics that produce a desired change in behavior. More specifically, I want to discuss antecedent-based self-management tactics. These are strategies that primarily focus on the manipulation of stimuli and events antecedent to the behavior. So the first one I want to discuss is manipulating and taking advantage of the dual effect of motivating operations. So we have establishing operations, which are going to increase the effectiveness of a reinforcer and are going to have an evocative effect on all the behaviors that have produced that reinforcer in the past. An example of taking advantage of this is if every time you go to Sunday dinner at your grandma's, she yells at you for not eating enough. She says you're withering away and you're too skinny. What you could do is refrain from eating prior to going to your grandmother's house. Depriving yourself of food will have an establishing operation which will produce a value altering effect that increases the reinforcing effectiveness of food as shown by Volmera and Iwata. This behavior altering evocative effect will increase the current frequency of all behaviors that have been reinforced by food in the past. On the flip side of that we have the abolishing operation. Abolishing operations are going to decrease the effectiveness of a reinforcer and have an abative effect on all the behaviors that have produced that reinforcer in the past. An example of taking advantage of this would be if every time you go to the movies your spouse yells at you for eating too much popcorn. If you were eating too much popcorn at the movies, you could eat a snack right before you get in the car to go to the movies. Food ingestion is an abolishing operation that produces a value altering effect that will decrease the reinforcing effectiveness of food. This behavior altering abative effect will decrease the current frequency of all behaviors that have been reinforced by food in the past. The second point I want to discuss is performing the initial step of a behavior chain. Nearly all of the tasks we, we complete in our daily life are chains of responses. And we want to do our best to ensure that you come in contact with the SD that reliably evokes the desired behavior. For example, if you want to start taking your dog out for a walk every morning, the first step, as soon as the idea and thought of taking your dog out for a walk crosses your mind, should be to grab that leash. Because once you have the leash, the next thing you're going to do is put it on the collar. And then you will walk the dog to the door. And then you go out and go for your walk. It is very important to make that first step very manageable and very likely that you are going to complete it. Make it easy. Make it small. So the third point I wanted to discuss is utilizing prompts. Discriminative stimuli alone may not be effective in producing the desired response. Therefore, prompts can be used to increase the probability that desired responses occur in the presence of the discriminative stimuli. Linda Mitchling has conducted great research supporting the effectiveness of using assisted technology to provide antecedent prompts. Prompts are stimuli that serve as reminders to engage in desired behavior. They can come in numerous forms including visual, auditory, or textual. I find that my phone is a tremendous tool and it can be used in many different ways. For example, if you have a tendency to run late to meetings, you can program your phone so that it displays a visual reminder on it, it vibrates, rings, or it can do all three an hour, two hours prior to your meeting. It can let you know that you need to start getting ready for your meeting, you need to get in the car to leave, whatever the case may be. The last point I want to touch on is manipulating the environment and removing materials required for an undesired behavior. This will increase the response effort required to engage in the undesired behavior. It may even make engaging in the undesired behavior impossible. You can't smoke cigarettes if you don't have any cigarettes in your house. And you can't eat junk food at your house if you have no junk food laying around. Just manipulating your environment and not giving yourself the opportunity to engage in these behaviors can have a tremendous effect. I hope you found some of these tips useful. Thank you for watching.